again. So today we're going to do another little painting. Um, I've got a little herd picture that I found, again, from Pixabay website. Um, so it is free for reuse and no copyright at all. Which is great for these little tiny pictures. That way we don't have to take our own reference photos. We're not going to sell them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, I'm going to sit my water over here out of the way and away from my drinking water so I don't get it mixed up. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do again is get my brush really wet. And I think I'm going to start with um, this red area right here again. Again, I like to start with the lighter areas because it's easier to get dark than it is to go lighter. So I'm getting some of the same red that we used last time. Actually, I might get a little bit of this other red too. Here we go. Mix them together. I like the way they look mixed together. As always, you can use whatever colors you want, in whatever way you want. These are your paintings. I'm just doing it the way I want for my painting. I've got a nice puddle going on here. I think I'm ready. I'm actually going to water it down a little bit more. That way, I don't have to worry about going too dark too fast. Here we go. We've got a nice light pink color. I'm going to fill in, leave in some space down here so I can get it lighter later. You can get some more water, some more paint. Gradually get darker as I go up. The darkest part of the red. It's right here around the neck. Now remember, if we don't want those brush strokes, you can just do little tiny circles. You don't want to push down hard on your paper because that can rip a hole in it. You're being really light with it. Well, for birds, it's nice to leave some of these brush strokes in here. Helps it look like feathers. And I'm taking some water, going down here at the bottom. Now again this time, I drew my little birdie out before I started. Now normally, I wouldn't draw it so dark. And then these pencil marks wouldn't show up as much. But I want to make sure you can see it on this camera. Add some more shadows. Color it in. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for a minute. Rinse my brush out real good. ahead and move on to this branch. Now the reason I'm choosing to do the branch next is because if I start on this green and the green and red mix, we're going to get a brown color. I don't want a brown color on my bird anywhere. So I'm going to let the red dry, work on this brown area down here, then I can do the green areas up here. When those are dry and this is dry, I can do that area. Then I don't have to worry so much about creating a boundary. So to make my brown color, I'm actually going to use a bit of this yellow here. Get my warm yellow, the one that looks a little orange. I can hear some birds outside. I don't know if you can hear them on the video, but they must know we're, t we're painting them today. Okay, so I've got my orangey yellow, my warm yellow. 
actually going to add some paint gray blue, so the dark blue that I had. Now I'm going to get this green color. And now earlier, I said if we mix red and green, we'll get brown. And I don't want brown in my bird, but I do want brown in my little stick there branch or whatever it is. So I'm going to add some red to this green. Now we've got a nice orangey brown. This isn't exactly like it is in the picture, but that's okay because I don't want it like it is in the picture. Okay, scoop that over a little bit. Do the branch the same way we do all the other things. Take it in the light area first so I don't have to worry about going too dark too fast now notice I am going in this angled direction for this branch because that's the angle that the bark goes we want to try to keep the brush strokes in the same way that the object we're painting is. So with the bird, we keep the brush strokes the way the feathers go. So it helps it look like feathers. With the branch, we go the way that the bark goes. Okay, so I'm going to start to add some of my shadows. To do that... I'm adding some Payne's Gray, that dark, dark blue, in with my brown color that I already have. Now, I'm going to trace out the places where I want shadows. You can go in to however much detail you want with this stuff. I'm going to add a few details with this paint gray color and mix with the brown and then I'm going to go back into it later with some darker paint gray and add some more details. Now if you want to stop adding details before me, that's perfectly fine. Again, this is your painting. You can do it however you want to. Okay, now I'm getting that paint gray and adding those details in. Now I'm still doing a wet on wet down here because the paper is still wet. If I wanted to, I could wait until it completely dries and then do a dry brush. And that would show up really well for this bark. Or I can just do a wet on dry. But I like the look of the wet on wet and the smoothness of it. So I think I'm going to keep it like that for now. I'm also going to go ahead and brush out the feet of our little hummingbird. They're not going to be super detailed either because of the size of this painting. But I don't want to forget them later. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and add that. There we go. Looking cute! I'm going to make sure to rinse your brush out really good before you go back into a lighter color. And I'm going to say that branch is done. And this is getting a little bit more dry. So I'm going to go ahead 
and make our green. I'm using the cool blue because if you remember from our first video my cool blue is lighter and I'm going to use my cool yellow that's got a green tint to it instead of the one that's got an orange tint and those two will make this really really lovely green because they're both leaning towards green on the color wheel they're both cool alright now I've got this pretty green color I'm going to get a little bit more water so I can go from light to dark, because I prefer to do it that way. I'm going to start the head. Yeah, this is a nice green color. Now remember, if it touches a wet, it's going to mix. Kind of watch that. Okay. Looks good. So now I'm going to take some Payne's Gray and mix it with that green color. So the dark, the really dark blue. I'm mixing it with this green that I mixed. And that's how I'm going to make my shadows. You could also mix red with green to make the shadows. Or you could buy, you know, one of those tube sets that has all of those colors already made for you. I just like mixing colors. when this dries more, we can do a dry brush in for those feathers. I'm going to get even more paint gray. And drop little droplets right here by the eye. Because this section is really dark in the picture. There we go. Just little tiny dots. That wet on wet. Might add a few over here too to make it look more like feathers. Now, as you can see, I did go a little down into the red. I want those feathers to look like they're really mixing well instead of just have a solid line. You can do it however you want though. In the photograph, it's more of a solid line. I just kind of like it looking more. Mm, organic. Okay, so now I'm getting our red again. And I'm going to start creating some more shadows in our red while the green dries. Because this red is pretty dry now. My paintbrush is quite a bit drier than it was before, but it's still wet. And I can make some really lovely shadows. Going right up to that green. I'm going to let them mix just a little bit. Since my brush is pretty dry. And that red is dry. That green will just mix a little bit. Now if you have it pretty wet. It's going to mix a ton. So you really got to be careful. I'll make some swooshy marks down here to create a texture like we did on the flower before. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out really well. Take some water 
and let it fade those marks out so they're soft like a bird. I'm still using that small cheat paper so it will look different when it dries. So for this neck area, I'm actually going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray to my red to help with these shadows. And I'm doing the same thing I did up here in the head. I'm just putting little drops so it gets some texture. Not too much because it's still watercolor so most of it will fade away because it's wet on wet but it does create some texture I'll let that dry for a minute I'm gonna go ahead and work on the eye and the beak so I'm just gonna take my paint gray and do a little circle here. I'm going to be careful not to let it go crazy. A little beak. Now remember you can always let it dry and come back and add more details. Add some green to this wing over here. Well, it's okay if it's not perfectly smooth, because again, it's a bird and they have feathers. And you can see I'm doing the same little dots that I did up here along the neckline for this wing so it looks like it's attached and then I'm going for it now I want to be careful right here because I did drop a drip of water so if it gets too much in there it'll start to spread out and I don't want that so I'm going to avoid that area for right now but I'll come back to it Little, little tail feathers. Add some paint gray to my green. I do have a fan going on in my little art room now. Right now. So that's helping this dry faster. And I've got the windows open. Normally... It wouldn't dry this fast. Okay, I'm going to mix a little bit of this green and the red together to make that brown color I talked about before. And I'm actually going to use that to put some shadows in this tail. As I mentioned on the flower video, I like to play with complementary colors. They really make the shadows pop. So that's what I'm doing here. Add in some red to make the green stand out some more. I think this area is safe now. So for this wing, since in the photograph it has such dramatic feathers, I am going to first put this medium green in. Now I'm going to take a little paint gray and mix it with my green. And I'm just going to keep adding 
little stripes. And this time, I don't think I will, like, smooth them out with water. I think I'm just going to let it be. If you want more of a contrast, let it dry a little bit, and then add some more paint gray. So I just added a little there to give it some more shadow. I'm purposefully leaving like these holes out so that way it gives it a little bit more dimension now remember with watercolor it's all about layering and letting the light shine through the paper I think our birds looking pretty good I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit down here. And on our painting, I mean on our photograph, this is pretty white. And I like that, but I think I'm going to add this muted red color to give it a little bit more shadow. And if you want, you can let it dry a little bit, and then take some of the yellow, either your warm or cool yellow, and then go over your green, and do some highlights. You don't have to keep it this yellow. But it does create some cool highlights. Now I'm mixing some green with it to tone that yellow down a little bit on the head. I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then I'll come back, and I'll add some more details. Alright, so I let it dry for a little bit. Not very long, but um, enough that I can touch it without getting paint on me. It's still bubbled up a little bit, so it is still wet. So now I'm going to take my little brush. This little baby one and I'm going to get some paint gray and I'm gonna go in and add any details that I want to add I don't have very much water on my brush at all this is like a dry brush. I'm also going to get some green. 
go back over it with some green. So I don't want it super, super detailed. You can make it that way. If that's the way you want it. I like the um, watery texture. But I do want um, some nice shadows. So, here we go. Now anytime you see an area and you don't really like it that well, you can take water and lightly go in circles and patch it up a bit. There we go. I'm still using my little brush. I'm gonna make some shadows right here for the neck. Just a couple. And then for this wing. I think this wing needs it the most. Help it stand out. Do some more dry brush details here in the tail. I think I'll even add some more in this. Right here. Well, this one's not lined it's in the background it's more out of focus but do some squiggles there. now I could keep going on and on making more details and more layers but I think I'm happy with it. I am going to get, let's see, what color do I want to use? I think I'll use some purple. I'm going to mix some blue and red together and go over this eye a little bit more with some purple just to make it stand out a little. You can't really see well in there. I'm also doing some small details. On this beak with the purple. Alright, let me see if I can get you closer. Here we go. Hopefully you can see that okay. But that's our second little painting.